Alhamdulillah Walhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Allah has blessed us with this month of Ramadan May Allah accept all of our fasts And all of our good deeds May Allah forgive this ummah Ameen ya rabbil alameen um, so Alhamdulillah Ramadan is over and we should be sad that Ramadan is over. We shouldn't be happy that Ramadan is over. Ramadan is the best month, the best time. So how could we be happy that the best month and the best time is over? So if you, you shouldn't, we shouldn't be happy that Ramadan is over. We should be sad that Ramadan is over. But Alhamdulillah it is over and we hope that Allah had made us to benefit from it. Just some, some things I want to go over quickly inshallah ta'ala. One, Anything you started doing in Ramadan, keep it up. Do not feel as though because Ramadan is over, you can go back and do whatever it is you want to do. You can go back to the go-go's, you can go back to music, you can go back to girlfriends, boyfriends. A person who after Ramadan, this is what Allah blessed me to learn through a knowledgeable brother. A person who goes back to the haram things to the forbidden things, a person who goes back to girlfriends, who goes back to music, who goes back to go-go's, clubs, a person who goes back to these things, they did not benefit from Ramadan. Maybe you have some people who only do good in Ramadan. A person who does this does not benefit from Ramadan. They did not benefit. Those whole 29, 30 days, however many days Allah blessed us with, they did not benefit from them. If you go back to the wrong things, you didn't benefit from Ramadan, period. Anything you did in Ramadan, keep it up. You don't stop just because Ramadan is over. Another thing, a more serious thing. You may have some people who only pray in Ramadan. They don't pray unless it's Ramadan, maybe. Allah knows best. So people who only pray in Ramadan, women who only cover themselves in Ramadan, anyone who does these things, this is shirk. And shirk is the worst sin and crime in Islam. A person who only prays in Ramadan, goes to the masjid in Ramadan, covers herself in Ramadan, practices Islam, is a Muslim in Ramadan, is committing shirk. Because you are associating Ramadan with Allah. You're making Ramadan a partner to Allah. Because we should be doing these things regardless of Ramadan. So if you're doing these things in Ramadan, you are saying Ramadan is your God. Allah is in your God. Ramadan is your God. This is truly who your God is, Ramadan. Because you don't do these things unless it's Ramadan. You're saying that Allah does not exist until Ramadan starts. How many days are there in a the year? 365 days? You're saying that Allah only exists for 29, 30 days. And the other days he doesn't exist. So this is shirk. And we can't. This is the worst sin and crime. So anything we did in Ramadan, we need to keep it up. Any good deeds, praying, uh... All the good deeds that we did in Ramadan, we should keep them up after Ramadan. A person who does this, this is a person who truly benefited from Ramadan. Because they keep their duties up all year round. These are the people who benefit from Ramadan. The people who keep up their duties to Allah. And keep their word to Allah. Keep their promises to Allah. Keep their duties to Him. These are the people who benefit from Allah. These are the people who benefit from His blessed month, Ramadan. These are the people who benefit. Another thing I would like to mention is the Quran. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. This is the month that the Quran was revealed. All books were revealed in this month. The, 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 the Injil, the Torah, the Psalms, which is called the Bible, and the Quran. These books were revealed in Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these books in Ramadan. You know, so it is truly uh, a blessing, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This book, the Quran. One thing Allah has blessed me to know, you know, it's amazing how we put this book behind us, the Quran. It is amazing how we put this book, the Quran, behind our backs. Because you may, like, again, people may increase in reading the Quran in Ramadan or only read it in Ramadan. This is incorrect. Allah has blessed me to learn. He has inspired me to learn this Ramadan. It is amazing how we put this book behind our backs. When the Quran is 
the source of all success. Think about it. What are three things all people want? It doesn't matter what race you are, whether you're black, Spanish, Arab, Pakistani, Mexican, whatever. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what country you are. It doesn't matter where you're from, young or old. What are three things that everyone wants? Everyone. What are three things everyone wants? Happiness, peace, and success. These are three things all human beings want. And if a person says they don't want these things, that's a, that's a lie. Even I came to that realization. I'm going to say that I don't want happiness and success and peace. Of course I want these things. These are things we all want. These three things. This is what we're all fighting for. We wake up in the morning to go try to chase it and get it. We're dying, breaking our backs, trying to get these three things. Happiness, peace, and success. And people who don't get these things kill themselves. People who don't get it, get their happiness and don't get their peace and don't get their success, they kill themselves. So these are three things all people want. Where do these three things come from? What is one of Allah's names? As-Salam, the source of peace. He is peace. Happiness and success are good things, right? These things are good. What is another one of Allah's names? Al-Bar, the source of all goodness. So happiness, peace, and success comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glorious and exalted is He. These things come from Allah. You don't get them from anywhere else. You can't get them from Walmart. You can't buy them. These things only come from Allah. They don't come from anywhere else. They don't grow on a tree. You can't go to a certain country and get it. A specific river overseas and go find it. These things only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't come from anywhere else. The Quran is directions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A brother, a student of knowledge taught me and, and another brother of mine, basically, if you're not reading the Quran, how do you know who Allah is pleased with? How do you know who Allah is displeased with? How do you know? How do you know anything? The Quran is the source of knowledge. And to get back to the subject, happiness, peace, and success, three things we as people want. Allah tells you how to get these things in the Quran. The Quran is directions. This is also what the Quran is, directions. Allah tells us how to get things. If you don't follow the directions, how do you meet your goal? If you want to get to Philadelphia, how do you get to Philadelphia if you don't follow the directions? So how do you get success, peace, and happiness if you're not following Allah's directions? And Allah is the best to direct. So forget about a personal thing. We're not even talking about a spiritual thing, which should be the most important thing. But I'm not even talking about a spiritual type of thing. I'm talking about happiness, peace, and success. Things that everyone wants. Huh? These things are with Allah. How do you get them? By not following his book. So I'm speaking to your nafs. I'm not speaking to your, 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 your spirit, spirituality type of thing. I'm speaking to your nafs, to your desires. These are our desires. These things are with Allah. You don't get these things except by following Allah's book. So it is amazing how we put the Quran behind our backs when this is the source of all good from our Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's amazing. It is insane. This is what Allah blessed me to learn this Ramadan. It is insane to put the Quran behind your back. Not, oh, it's a bad thing. You shouldn't really do it. It is insane to put the Quran behind your back. It's insane. Think about it. If a person who is sick with diabetes, they're sick with diabetes and they're told that they have to go on a trip and this trip is, is, is going to take 10 days to get to this place that we're going to. Wouldn't it be insane for them to not bring their insulin? Because this is what Allah has blessed to cure them. And Allah is the one who cures, not the medicine. It's Allah. To believe that anything cures other than Allah is shirk. It's shirk. Allah is the one who cures. This is what Allah cures them with by his permission. Wouldn't it be insane for them not to bring their insulin? It would be insane for them not to bring their insulin. This is what Allah blessed me to learn this Ramadan. It is insane to put the Quran behind your back. It is not. It is bad for you. 
It is bad for you. It's not bad for Allah. Because Allah says that we cannot benefit him. And we cannot harm him. It is bad for you. It is insane to put this book behind your back. It is to your own harm. Brothers and sisters, we have to change this. And inshallah ta'ala, I have made my step to change this. I told Allah, I promised Allah, and may Allah help me to fulfill my promise. Ameen, Ya Rabb. I promised Allah this Ramadan that for the rest of my life until he causes my death, every day I'm going to read the Quran. At least two pages a day. One in the morning and one at night for the rest of my life. And this isn't enough. This isn't enough, but this is what I told Allah. And I promised him this. And you have to keep your promise to Allah. So you, may Allah help me to, me to keep my promise. I mean. And you have to keep your promise. I'm not saying follow my example and make a promise. Because if you make a promise to Allah, you have to fulfill it. Allah says in the Quran that basically the promises are going to be asked about. So don't make a promise that you're not going to keep. To Allah or to the creation. Because Allah is just. You can't be good to Allah and bad to the creation. That's not right. So... But I promised Allah for the rest of my life until he causes my death, I'm reading the Quran at least two pages a day, one in the morning and one at night. It is insane for us to put this book behind us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, basically, if you put the Quran in front of you, you're going to enter paradise. And whoever puts it behind their backs is going to lead them to the hellfire. This is the word of our Prophet. He only spoke from Allah. He didn't speak his own opinions. I'm not saying read two pages a day. Read whatever is easy for you. Allah is ar -Rahim. He is the most merciful. The most merciful of all those who show mercy. If you read one ayah of the Quran, less than 20 words. If you read one ayah of the Quran every day, sincerely for Allah's sake, for his pleasure, because you want his guidance, because you want his blessings, his happiness, and his peace. If you read one ayah of the Quran a day for the sake of Allah, seeking what is with him, sincerely, this will benefit you. Even just one ayah, one verse of the Quran, this will benefit you with your Lord. Allah has blessed me also to learn this Ramadan. It's your heart. You reach Allah through your heart. This is this is a way that you this is a way you connect. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way you connect to him. Because if you don't have a good heart. Nothing is. You're not benefiting. Allah isn't accepting anything from you. If it's not from your heart. So this is how you connect to Allah. With your heart. Allah says in the Quran. In Surah Al-Hajj. About the sacrifice. He says that it's not the blood. Or the meat from the sacrifice. That reaches him. It is our hearts. That reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you do things from your heart. Sincerely, Alhamdulillah, you are benefiting with your Lord. You are okay, inshallah ta'ala. You are okay with your Lord. If you are truly doing something from your heart and not to get praise and to show off. This is minor shirk to do things to show off. But if you do it totally for Allah's sake, seeking what is with Him, you are benefiting with your Lord. But it's not enough to read the Quran and not apply it. You read the Quran and you apply what you learn. You have to apply it. I was reading, there was a story, there was this man, me and this man were having a dialogue. I'm a Muslim, he was a, he's a Christian. May Allah guide him, I mean. And he was sharing me this video about this person who used to be a Muslim. May Allah guide him, may Allah guide his family, I mean. And basically this person used to be a Muslim. And he was telling, he was showing me this video, I guess in an attempt to call me to Christianity. billah, we seek refuge in Allah. In an attempt to call me to Christianity, he was sharing me this video. And in this video, there was this man. One day he asked his father, basically he wanted to learn the Quran. So his father helped him. His father helped him in this, sent him to a school. He was studying for years and years. I think he was even an imam. He was leading a prayer in the, in the movie. And this is supposed, supposed to be a true story. Allah knows best. And basically in this story, he was studying the Quran so much. So much studies. He was almost about to go to Saudi Arabia. He was studying the Quran so much. But what happened? In the end, Allah misguided him. One thing Allah blessed me to know and guided me to know and inspired me to know is that all this Quran this person read, they never benefited from it. All this Quran this person memorized and learned or whatever, whatever studies he did, he never benefited 
from one part of it because he left Islam. So he never benefited from the Quran. As much as he read it and studied it, he never benefited from it. This is what Allah blessed me to learn. Allah didn't let me be scared by this. He didn't let me let this put fear in my heart. Allah let me know all this Quran and he never benefited from it. Had he really benefited from it, he wouldn't have went astray. So all of that Quran and he left Islam. So he never benefited from the Quran. So Read the Quran and apply what you learn. The companions of Prophet Muhammad, his followers, radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with them. I mean, they read the Quran, they studied the Quran, and they memorized the Quran, and they applied the Quran. So don't just memorize it, don't just read it, apply it. And if you do this, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, you will enter Jannah, you will meet your Lord, inshallah ta'ala, Allah will put your book in your right hand. So we ask Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah rectify what we have put forth. May Allah forgive us. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And we have to continue to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to give us pure deeds and pure intentions, and to guide us. You have to constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you. Because the guidance is with Him. The peace is with Him. The mercy is with Him. The Jannah is with Him. Everything good is with Him. And all harm is caused by him. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to baraka wa ta'ala to may he be blessed and exalted. You ask him to guide you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.